Hey everybody, I'm back. Applause. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm cracking up a little bit. Anywho, I missed you all. I missed you a lot. I want to thank Colleen and Robin and Debbie, especially for all of your comments and even watching my goofy cooking video and uh, always hanging in there with me for this little project here. I am on, and of course I have to look, I am on day, oh no, 37. I will show you day 35. This is one I did while we were gone camping for two nights, two whole nights. Woohoo! Now, I don't know if you can tell, but those are all triangles and inverted triangles. And I'll show you the back because it shows it even better. But I call it intertwined triangles. <laughs> don't say that three times real fast. Intertwined triangles. And I really like it. So, anywho, did that one. Then yesterday, I did this one. I just wanted to keep it simple. I was egg-zusted, um, but I'll tell you more about that later. So, I had seen this on um, Instagram. There's a lady who does videos, and I thought this was cute. And let me tell you what, it was a challenge because she does the little French knots first. And then does the long, and you can see this buckles because I pulled that. Um, see, it's it's like warped. <laughs> um, then she does the stems, and then she does the bow. I don't think I, see, they're both, um, the stems are both lifted off of the, I don't know if you can see that, lifted off of the fabric. You can see it there. But anyway, it's cute, but I would do it the other way around next time. I would do the long stems and the I would leave the stems looser. These are two strands. And I would tie the bow and then do the French knots, I think. Because, um, yeah, it was a challenge. So, those are what I did while I was gone. Missing you. And I have to get up because I dropped. What do they call it? Mm. Oh, my brain is fried. They call it the the little photo that shows up for the video. Anyway. Thumbnail. The thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I knew it was something small. Thumbnail. Okay. <laughs> and I have some goodies to show you. But I'm not showing you till the end because you might just not wait. So you can either fast forward to the end or you can... Hang out with me, grab something to stitch, sew, uh, crochet, knit, uh, whatever you might do. You know, grab it, get a cup of tea or good stiff drink if you're listening to me. See how I made that rhyme? And we will take it away, Sam. Okay. So I pulled... I'm, I'm really tired, as I have stated once already. Let me pull the light over here, see if we can get it to do a bit. Oh, sorry, jiggling. Everything's on the same table. Um, and pull you back over this way a little more. Sorry for all the moving. I apologize, I apologize, I apologize. Okay, what needle do I want to use because I don't know what I'm doing yet? I also apologize for the noise outside. We came back and the tree cutting, I guess, has uh, finished, I'm guessing, because now they are hauling all of the big oak trees away that they cut down. I don't know if they're oaks and maples and gum tree. I don't know what they took, mostly oak around here, but they are hauling those away on a big log truck now. And so, yeah, there's noise going on outside. Yay, not. I am going to put these, I'm going to put this carefully over here. 
And I'm going to set these on my table. Now I don't know which one I want to do. I don't know whether to go with the light blue, which is really pretty. And I haven't opened this light blue yet. This is Eleganza and uh, it's EZM 1018. Put it in the camera, Martha. It's a size eight, Wonderful Perlay cotton. Um, I haven't used this yet, but I kind of feel like the baby blues don't go that well. This is more of a, a dark blue and a teal. I could use that, but again, it's a little baby bluish, but it's got lighter blue in it too. But I think I'm going with the dark. I kind of like the dark. Now, I do have one more option, but I'm not doing that today um, with this particular piece. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> because it's in the, the new goodies that I bought. And I spent way more money than I should have. And about $50 more than I thought I was spending because, you know, me and math. You know the story about me and math, right? It took me four years of high school to get through two years of high school high school algebra. I never made it to geometry because it took me four years to get through algebra. Why they had to teach me that, I have no clue. I have never, ever, ever, ever used anything like um, any kind of math problem that used algebra. You know, I, I don't know. Anywho's, that's that. That's my math story. My very sad math story. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do first. Am I going to outline the dragonfly? Or am I just going to stitch around everything? I think I'm just going to stitch around everything, to be honest, because, as I said, I'm pooped. Um, there goes the truck. Sorry. I'm, I'm just going to wait for him to pass. I hope this finds all of you well. And Robin. Robin and Colleen and Debbie... And hmm, I don't want to leave anybody out. I know I'm leaving somebody out. I think I left Robin out the first time. I couldn't leave Robin out. She's like my email bestie. She and her dog, Boris. Okay. And the truck is stopped right behind the house next door to us. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I have absolutely no choice but to deal with the noise that is going on outside right now. And again, I apologize. <sighs> she whiz. So I le we left, um, we packed up the van most of it on Sunday, but there was some things we couldn't pack until Sunday night, like food and pots and pans and stuff. And Monday, that just left us minimal things to be able to get in the van that we needed. Clothes. Well, even my clothes went in before that. My clothes went in Sunday night as well. Um, what else? Monday, we um, once we got all packed, we ate breakfast. Did our showers and everything got packed and we took a trip to Fredericksburg which we had to pass through anyway to get where we were going good old I-95 going north and we went to get fuel and then we stopped and got lunch at Kava And then we went our way up north 
And the traffic was great. There was no traffic at the time we left. I think we left here at 11-ish. And we made good time. We were a little early, but we were able to check in to the campground. So we went and checked in and we settled in. Tony plugged us in. And then we were having some trouble with one of the items that we brought. It was a, it is a um, little plastic dish about this wide and about this long. And we had used some tacky stuff. Sometimes it's called museum putty. If you want to stick something down but not stick it down permanently, it's really good stuff, but I didn't use enough. When I stuck it on the bottom of the thing and Tony went and stuck it out in the van, it holds our hand soap, dish soap, and hand sanitizer. And I didn't stick enough gummy stuff on the bottom to hold it in place. So we had the rest of the afternoon and uh, Tony went and unplugged us. <laughs> We took a drive to Walmart that I hadn't, we, neither of us had been to it in a very long time. And then I found what I wanted, some command Velcro strips. And then I put them on when we got back to the campground. But, oh, when we got to the campground, we ate lunch. But... I did not put them, I did not put the basket in a good place. And it's in my way for things I want to do at the sink. So I'm going to have to go buy more of those. And I am going to have to replace the little bin that they sit in. I also need a new soap bottle for my dish soap. Because the one we have is round and the little plastic bin that it sits in is square and it's that old adage you know it's hard to fit a round peg into a square hole so we I either need to find a new little bin and and that bin is perfect because it's just wide enough not to take up a lot of room where I want to put it or I need to find a new soap dispenser that is square. Not sure how easy that's going to be. <laughs> A good soap dispenser is hard to find. It's frustrating. I find a lot of things hard to find. I don't know if you all find the same thing. Like you have something in your mind that you want. Tell me I'm the only one doing this. You know what you want. It's in your brain. You know it exists, but you can't find it anywhere anymore. You used to be able to walk into like Walmart or Kmart or something like that and be able to find that stuff. And now you can't. Well, here there's no more Kmarts. I used to go into Tuesday morning and find things. They're all closed down around us now. I mean, the one near us closed down, I think, right after the pandemic started. Um, I remember wearing a mask one of the last times I went in there. And the one up north that we used to go to was never as good as the one was down here. But now they're closed, too. I used to love to go there to get my junk journaling supplies. I carried all the Tim Holtz stuff, and now they're gone. I mean, even our Hobby Lobby isn't carrying that stuff anymore either. So, but anyway, such is life. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that has such a problem finding things, but it's frustrating. So basically, we just settled in, 
We, Tony went for a few walks. I made my heart when we settled in that afternoon. And it took me a while to make that heart. It probably took me two hours because of all the triangles. And I did draw them on the back. And I basically almost sewed from the back, trying to follow, follow the lines that I drew. And then we made dinner and we watched some videos and we went to bed. And the next morning we woke up and we knew we were going to the little needle shop that is was close the closer by needle shop and they do a lot of um it's mostly cross stitch and cross stitch and needle point supplies they had tons of threads i will insert pictures here And you can see the amount of threads they have. Little shop, um, several employees in there, and they were all watching us very closely. <laughs> so Tony went and sat in the van. They did um, require us to wear masks, and which I'm fine with. I'm still masking almost everywhere. And because... I am compromised. And Tony went and sat in the van and just hung out so that I didn't feel rushed or anything. Plus, the shop is really tiny. I mean, really tiny. And I kind of wander around in circles, and then I wander back through again to make sure I didn't miss anything. And all I bought was three um, skeins of thread. But they're pretty. They're not DMC. They are anchor. Um, I only have two other anchors, and they are the spools. These are not spools. They didn't even have the anchor spools in there, to be honest. Um, they had a lot, a lot, a lot of different kinds of threads. I don't love silk. I've worked with silk several times, and I don't love silk ribbon. The ribbon's okay. I'd rather use a nylon ribbon, to be honest. Um, the, like if you're making ribbon flowers or something. I don't use big bulky yarns, like needle point type yarns. And I, so all I was after was new and different embroidery threads. So I did buy those, which I will show at the end. And then we finished there. Didn't take me long. I was in there maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then they, we went to, we went on Fort Belvoir and we went to the post exchange there because Tony is retired military. So we have access to the post exchange, the commissary, all that stuff. We hadn't been there in a long time. Um, we just walked around the prices. I couldn't, it used to be we'd go into the post exchange and that's where I would find less expensive clothing and stuff. It's not like that anymore. It hasn't been like that for years, but yeah, I mean, they carry name brands and, and their prices were not less than the outside world. So didn't find anything there. Walked around the food court, didn't find anything there. And we had lunch in the van anyway. So we went out to the van and we ate lunch in the parking lot. 
because we can. We made soup and we have a, a Jackery 1000, which is a portable lithium ion battery power pack. And we just plugged our um, induction cooktop on that into that. And we heated up our soups and we had salad from the day before that we had picked up. And we had a nice lunch. We finished that. And we, Tony wanted to go take a ride to the outdoor recreation area. Fort Belvoir has a camping spot there. However, it was not less expensive than, than the regional park we were staying in. So we didn't stay there. It is on the water though, which I wouldn't have minded. And we wanted to drive around there to see what it was like in case we want to stay there another day for some other reason. And then we went to, what else did we do? Oh, then we went over and parked near the Army Museum, which I think it's a national museum. I think. I'd have to look at the paperwork. The thing was huge, humongous, and there were all these big tour buses that pulled up. Yeah, and most of them full of kids, <laughs> teenagers. Oh my goodness, it was a mess. But other than it being crowded beyond my comfort zone, and very warm in there that day, it was very warm in, in the building, and I don't do well when I start overheating. I, I'm such a wimp. But I don't do well when I overheat. So I sat down a couple of times and Tony walked around and saw the things he wanted to see. And I would sit nearby. And the other things I would go in and see with him. So, I mean, it all worked out. It was a very nice exhibit. You do not have to be, uh, it's not in the confines of Fort Belvoir, it's near Fort Belvoir, but you don't need a military ID card to get in there. And so if you're ever, you know, in the Alexandria, Virginia area or the Fort Belvoir area, it is interesting to see. They go through all of the U.S. wars that have happened and show like the equipment, the years. They had a room where they showed all the headlines of all major events that happened um, on a, like a ticker tape um, digital readout thing that you look up and see. I mean, it was interesting. Not my favorite thing to do. War history is something that I've never, well, history in general, <laughs> not my favorite thing. Take me somewhere like a planetarium or somewhere that explains earth science, I'm all in. Not Tony. So, but he wanted to see it. He spent 21 years in the army and he wanted to see it. So we went and walked around and by then I was exhausted. We had walked um, all totaled yesterday. I walked something like 7,500 steps. That's what my phone told me. And I don't know how accurate that is, but typically a 2,000 day step exhausts me. And that's not like, I don't carry my phone in my pocket because mostly I wear leggings in the house and my leggings don't have pockets. Um, I don't, it only counts my steps if I'm walking from room to room and taking my phone with me. But like if I get up from the living room, and I go in the kitchen, it's not counting those steps. I do kind of wish I had an iPhone, uh, not an iPhone, an iWatch, so that um, I could be, I could count that stuff more accurately. But anyway, this that I did um, 
almost 7,800 steps. It was 7,750 or something like that. But anyway, when we got back, I put my legs up for a while because I do better if my legs are up for several hours during the day. And um, then I walked again that evening. So I'm gonna try and get out and walk more. I, I need to do that. I know I need to do that. It's good for my heart. It's good for my arterial disease. It's good for, you know, keeping cancer away. I know it's good for me. I just struggle with it because I'm always in so much pain between my knees and my foot. I have arthritis in my left foot. And I have it in the metatarsals. And I'm pretty sure I have it in the joint of my big toe. That jo You know, this joint here where your toe meets your foot. <sighs> I know I, I have that. That jams up on me like it's stuck. Oh my gosh, that's so painful. I need to find a different pair of shoes. If I could walk everywhere barefoot, I'd hurt a lot less. But anyway, I'm always barefoot in the house. Sometimes I have socks on when it's cold, but I'm always barefoot. Like, I hate wearing shoes. I hate it. I can't wait to walk in the house. The first thing I do is rip off my shoes. Second thing I do is rip off my jeans. Because <laughs> I, I, I hate wearing jeans, too. But anyway. um, So... I was pretty proud of myself that I was able to do that. So I know that I need to get out and walk more. I'm also a weather wimp. Like I can't walk when it's hot and humid. Like anything over 75, I start sweating and my heart starts racing and then I have a panic attack and bad things happen. So yeah, so I think I did okay yesterday. Um, we had a tough time sleeping. Both of us had a tough time sleeping both nights, so that wasn't fun. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes, right? And other than that, I really enjoy being, like, in the parks and watching other people. I love to people watch. I just love sitting and watching other people. Unless they're doing disgusting things. But anyway. <laughs> and boy, could I tell you a couple of stories about that. But um, I went into the ladies' room this morning. In the park ladies' room. And there was a little girl in there. She couldn't have been but four or five. And she looked scared to death. She was in a, a long sleeve t-shirt and undies. No shoes. It was cold this morning. It was like 40 degrees this morning. And the bathroom's heated, but still... There was a lady outside talking to a guy in a car and she was doing something in the trunk of her car. I don't know if that was her mother or what, but I was in there going to the bathroom and this little girl was in there all by herself and she looked scared to death. And it just really frustrated me that somebody would just leave their kid in there, not care that somebody else is walking in the, the bathroom and this kid is in there all by herself. And she kept trying to open the door to look outside to see if her, I guess that was her mom. I asked her, I said, hi, is your mom outside? Are you okay? She wouldn't talk to me, but she looked frightened. I wasn't sure what to do about it, but we went back about, I don't know, 20 minutes later. And um, she was gone and the, the lady with the car was gone. So I'm assuming that was her mother. I don't know. I just, you know, when my daughter was small, I never let her out of my sight. Because there are some real weirdos out there in this world. But, anyhow. I'm just randomly stitching now. In case you couldn't tell. Okay. I'm going to end that there, but I might do, I might outline the wings and the body. I have a little time and still time left to show and tell stuff. Yeah, things like that bother me. And there were kids out. Uh, we were parked in a in the campground in a spot that was just 
right be right behind us but a little that way to the right was a um I might use the other blue for that though was um a playground and there were about six or seven kids out there i i don't know if they were all from the same family or what friends or what but they all came together and they all left together and they all played together and they all acted like they'd known each other a long time but there were three little girls and two, like three or four older boys and they played for like three hours no adult ever came to check on them I don't know. I'm just dumbfounded sometimes. I, I guess I was very overprotective of my children. So. I I don't understand. All the time. How some things go on. But anyway. That was that. And. I mean, it's fun watching them, but it's also a little scary watching them because some of them do things that don't seem safe. I guess nobody got hurt. But still. Yeah. And we were supposed to stay over tonight, but both Tony and I were ready to come home. There wasn't anything we were doing this afternoon that I couldn't do another day that we could take a trip in the car and go do. So I was wanting to go to the, there's a craft type recycle center type place near artistic artifacts. However, they weren't gonna open until noon and we were at Artistic Artifacts at 10 a.m. And I probably spent a half an hour in there. And then we got on the road and came straight back towards the house and stopped and got groceries. And so, boy, I didn't do that right. I should have started out here and then gone in there. I, I don't think these things through very well, do I? All right. I'm just going to carry my thread down. And I don't like doing that. And so we did our grocery shopping. And we got home about 1230. And we got everything, almost everything out of the van. I have a few things I have to go get. Like, I know I need to wash my sheets. I'll do that tomorrow. Or the next day. <laughs> I'm not in a big hurry to get my sheets from the van and wash them. We're not going anywhere in the next five days. So, anyway. Got everything else unpacked. I stay in the van and I hand everything to Tony. And then he puts it on a table in the garage. And then... When I think I've gotten everything, which I never do, I always inevitably leave things in there. When we, I think I've gotten everything out, I come in the house and then he unloads from the table and hands it to me and I stack it in the kitchen in the house. And then when that's all done, we unload everything in the house. So we have, we have a good system that works. Um, yeah, and there's some things we can leave in the, in the van, but not very much because I don't want mice and squirrels and ants to come in and get that stuff. We aren't happy with the refrigerator. It's not staying as cold as it should. For as cold as it was outside today, the refrigerator didn't stay very cold while we were traveling. <clears throat> and it runs off solar power, and it's supposed to stay cold. 
So I don't know if we're going to have to look at getting a new fridge. We have new batteries for the van and the solar panel works. So I, I don't know what the problem is. There was nothing else running but the fridge. It should have stayed cold, but it wasn't staying below 40. So I don't know. We'll have to do some research on that. Figure that out. There's one guy that's really knowledgeable. He's in the Facebook group that we belong to for this particular type of van. And um, maybe I'll write him a note and ask him what his thoughts are of what it could be. You know, what he thinks. Of course, he's, he's probably going to say, bring it on down. I'll put lithium batteries in it for you and another solar panel. And it's like, uh, no, we can't afford that. We just got new AGM batteries put in. So, I don't know. Oopsies. Hate when that happens. But it happens every time. Got thread in my mouth. Yep, so that's the only negative that we had. Um, I do have to say that I'm a little tired of... I love our van. I really love our van. It's just not very comfortable to spend a long time in. And the older I get, you know, five years ago when we got it, it was different. I could do a lot more... But now it's just gotten to the point, it doesn't have a dinette in it. The only place there is to sit is either on the beds or um, in the front chairs that swivel front, from face forward to face backwards. They do swivel around, but they're not comfortable. Because when you swivel them around, my feet don't touch the door. The door. The floor when they're swiveled around. My feet touch the floor when we're driving, whether I'm in the driver's seat or the passenger seat. But when you swivel them around, they change angle. And that's not very comfortable for my back. And Tony gets tired sitting in those chairs too. And we didn't set anything up outside because it was very cold. And we were not going to go sit outside. And even when it's nice out, then when it gets warm, there's bugs. Ugh, I hate bugs. I don't like the heat. I don't like the humidity. And I don't like bugs. So I usually end up inside anyway. And it's just not comfortable. However, can't really afford to sell the van or trade it in. Because for certain reasons that were, you know, decisions we made... Um, we owe more on the van than we can get for it right now. So I don't, I haven't been able to convince Tony that we need to do something else yet. I don't know what that would be, but something bigger would be nice. Either a trailer or that we pull with a, another vehicle or a bigger class C. I don't know. I don't know. I would just really like to have somewhere else to sit and play cards or play games or watch the uh, iPad when we're watching videos and stuff. So I don't know what we're going to do. So, so much for my whining. I do hope you're all well and that you had a good weekend and you're having a good week. You're busy working on stuff. I'm just doing this so this fabric doesn't pull away from the background. You know, when you have a big patch of fabric and like, say, 
say this was going to be a patch on my jeans and you wash it a few times and then that fabric starts pulling away from the from the base fabric so this is just more or less because I want it tacked down to the to the back fabric I do have to say today it's nice and sunny I don't know if you can see that light right there but that's the sun <laughs> So it is nice and sunny. It's still really cool. It's like um, 60, maybe 60 or so-ish, but there's a breeze blowing again. Seems to be a lot of wind lately. In fact, I have a warning on my phone that for Saturday into Sunday, there are gale warnings for the coastline. We're not that far from the coastline, but we're not on the coast. And there are gale warnings for like small ships and stuff that you're supposed to stay off the water. I don't think I can go that way. So, um, I guess we're going to get some wind. Because if there's gale warnings for the coastline, we'll get the wind too. And then there's going to be several days of rain next week, supposedly. Yuck. Of course, every time the forecast shows that, eventually, at least a few of the days, end up not being. My stitchers are way tinier there than there. I'm getting impatient. Um, lately, when the forecast shows that stuff, that there's going to be rain several days in a row or whatever, it usually ends up being better than that. That, that sort of isn't as bad usually in the end and so I'm hoping that's that happens again it is going to warm up though it's supposed to be in the 70s almost every day so at least there's that The other thing I didn't do is um, the last couple days I've had I haven't had a chance to have my afternoon tea, and boy I've really missed it. It's funny how you get used to something. I usually have decaffeinated green tea in the afternoon. I'm gonna order some loose leaf tea. If you drink, if you're in the U.S. and you drink loose leaf tea and brew it yourself. Let me know what brands you like. I find, I found um, decaf, I can only drink decaf because of my heart. Um, so I like decaf green tea. I don't, there aren't a lot of flavored teas I like. I'm not a big, you know, raspberry orange ginger tea drinker. I want just green tea, decaf and black tea decaf. And I did find one company. I haven't ordered from them yet. But Tony told me it's about time to do that because I wanted to go through the tea bags first. And again, this is just me and my OCD and my overactive imagination, probably. But I've heard many reports where tea bags are toxic. And I am trying to be as non-toxic as I possibly can. It's not easy. I, I don't do it as well as I could. But I'm working on it. And being that I drink minimum two cups large. And I mean, not little teacups. I'm talking... <laughs> I'm talking, you know, 12, 18, 12 or 16 ounce mugs. Um, you know, the tea bags, supposedly when the boiling water hits them, they have plastics in them and you're ingesting those plastics. So I bought a very fine mesh tea diffuser and we rip the tea bags open and pour the little tiny tea in there. But a lot of that tea gets into my, 
it, it gets through the mesh, which is fine. I don't mind it. I don't drink it. It's not like drinking grit, you know, like I don't drink coffee at all. So, um, loose leaf tea is much bigger pieces, so I won't have that problem. I just don't know if it's money wise, if it's as, mm, the only word that comes to mind is efficient, and that's not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. So, I don't know if it'll cost me more in the long run or less, no idea, but I want to give it a try. And so the tea I'm going to shoot for is organic and just not in tea bags. And I'm going to do that. So I have to order those probably tomorrow. I'll do that tonight or tomorrow. Don't know how long it'll take to get here from the company. I'm gonna make it one more stitch. <laughs> one more. It was so weird. We we're um, sitting on a corner waiting for the light to turn to uh, come back home from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria. And we... Uh, um, some lady drives up next to us and is honking and waving. Tony rolls down the window. She rolls down her window. It was one of the veterinarians I used to work with way back. Oh, my gosh. Um, been here seven years. Oh, my gosh. And then we were at the farm 12 years. So that's 19 years. So, And I had quit the vet clinic about a year before we moved here. So let's say 20 years, so like 21, 22 years ago. Now, we've gotten together a few times since I left the vet clinic, but it was her. She's waving, hi, what are you doing here? I'm like, we're on our way home. She goes, okay, it was fun seeing you, bye. And the light turned green, and she took off like a bat out of you know where. And there we are. Okay. I like it. It's simple, but it's pretty. A little bit of lace, a little bit of simple stitching. I'm happy. I had no idea what I was going to do. So, 37, right? So it was fun seeing her. I'll have to call her, see how she's doing. My friend Lydia. You know, for not knowing what I was going to do, I really like that. I could put a few more stitches there and there, but I'm going to leave it for now. We'll call that good. And then I am going to move the camera a little so that it's a um, further distance away from the goods that I want to show you. So I am going to do that momentarily here. I'll be right back. Hang in there so you can see the goodies. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. I need to... Hopefully the lighting is okay. So, you know, I usually, I love using these Eleganza Sue Spargo Wonderful, Wonderful. And these are the two boxes that I already had. I paid $43.99 back in, nah, probably three years ago and two or three years ago and of course like everything else prices go up so we were in there today and you know me and my variegated threads right so i got this one and i will take the box off 
I mean the cover off. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So hopefully the light is showing up okay. But those are the colors I got. They are showing up a little skewed. These are all blues, really dark blue. This is a beautiful blue and teal and like a dark blue or black. And then purples. <laughs> and that one's really pretty too. That'll make really pretty flowers. These all will, trust me. And then, so this is um, Celestial. That's what this one is called. It is called Celestial. And then this one is all greens and it's called Meadow. And they're all really pretty greens. This light is not doing it justice. Let me see if I can. I don't know, none of the light really works. But aren't those pretty? This is like um, blues and greens. This is a really, I mean, that green is just spectacular. I don't, uh, this light is not helping any at all. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry this isn't better. Like, I could do it in the sunshine, but then that's going to skew it too. And I can't do it outside because of the noise. But anyway, I'm really thrilled with those. And they were, they're now $46.99. Actually, if I hold it up there, the colors come through a little bit better. All right, so I got that. These three are the really pretty kind of rose colory that are um, Anchor brand. So there's, it's Anchor. And it's number 895. And we have number 1018 and 896. And they did not have any variegated in the anchor threads. So I got I did I got those not at Artistic Artifacts. I got those at the um, little needlework place. And then I got Milner's needles. And these are the um Tulip, Tulip, Milner's Needles, and they're a size of one, and they're going to be very nice. I need to figure out a way to keep them separate, because you've seen how I do my needles. I pull it out of the needle book, I use it, and I stick it back in the needle book. I don't know if I'll be able to keep these separate or not, but come on. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Hold that thought. I'm coming. So they come in this tube. And they are very nice sizes. They'll be great for bullion knots. And they had two other sizes. They had a 7 and a 10. But they were not the sizes I needed. So... Um, these will be good for bullion knots. So I'm happy I got those. And then I was walking towards the cashier and I found this fabric. And this is cotton linen blend. Now it said hemp on it, but then it said cotton hemp, I thought was something different. I could be wrong. Um, but I'm gonna end up dyeing this and we'll use it in ice dyeing, some of it. And some of it I'll leave this color. It's a really pretty kind of beige color. And um, I got a yard, it was $6.99 for a half yard. So this was considered two purchases. It is 44 slash 45 inches wide. So that's nice. It's a lot of fabric for um, 14 bucks. So, 
I know where I can get it now. I've been looking everywhere for this fabric. And I found some in Joann's once, but I haven't been able to find it again. So I really like it. So that is the, um, I can't remember the percentage. I'd have to look online. You can go to Artistic Artifacts online store and they have everything there listed. So there's that. And then hey, I got me another bundle. <sighs> yeah, this was uh, $30. <laughs> yeah, they hand dye these bundles themselves. I have one other bundle. It's very autumnal, kind of maroonish, kind of like the colors of the threads that I bought from the needle workshop. I'm trying to undo this knot here. If I do it on the table, I'll just jiggle the camera all over the place. So I'm trying to do it in my lap. But you can sort of go through the top of it. Oh my gosh, I should have done this before I started. You can go through the, they roll the fabrics up together. So in art artistic artifacts, you can buy, like they have little tiny doilies and of all sorts, like vintage stuff um, and fabrics. They have bagfuls. They have um, just little ones hanging separately, but they want like six, eight, ten, twelve dollars a piece for those. I can't get this off. I want to stop the camera again. I'm sorry. So they're they're all different prices depending on what you want, but they sell all the stuff individually. And then they had bags with, like, excess fabric and stuff in them. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to cut this ribbon, but I can't get it undone either. Come on. I'm going to stop right. the camera. I'll be right back. Better. So I was flipping through it, right? You can, you can flip through the ends of it like this. And I turned it up this way. And I was like, ooh, like that. Like that. This is a big piece of fabric. And then I came across this. Look, it's hearts. <laughs> and it's purples and it's teals and it's greens. And if you looked at the thread I just bought, you know, like the lady at the cashier said, I see a theme going on here. I said, yeah, you might. So look. So this is $30 of hand dyed. And some of this fabric are, they're big pieces. I mean, look at this. absolutely love it it's hearts you guys and this is like a fat quarter it's as big as a fat quarter so <laughs> how can i pass that up right and it's dyed really pretty colors this is the back of it you can see the colors better and then this look at that isn't that pretty and purple and very purple and then that is gorgeous. Wait until that's ironed. That is going to be beautiful. And it feels like this is all cotton. And this very, I mean, this is twice this size. The camera's not even out far enough for it to be seen. This is at least a fat quarter of just green cotton. And I could over dye this if I wanted to. And then there's this lace, like an old lace, part of a lace doily. It looks like a, women used to put it on their dresser, a dresser scarf. Looks like that. And then this is part of a crocheted, I don't know what that was. A dress? I don't know. Probably just a big round doily of some sort. But isn't that pretty? It's kind of the tealy, turquoisey, greeny colors. And this is a large piece with some excess thread on it. Isn't that pretty? Look at that design. And the colors, the shades of purple. Mm-hmm. And then this one, so this was worth $30. 
I mean, I can't look at that. Isn't that pretty? I might just use that in my bedroom. It's one piece of like a cotton embroidered doily. I don't know if I can cut this up. That might go on my uh, bedside table. <laughs> in fact, a couple of these things might. This is, this is weird. Maybe it was a scarf of some sort or something. I don't know. Very green, some blues in it, touch of yellow here and there. That feels weird. And then this is like a, a this had to have been a tablecloth. I can't, I can't, can you see that in there? It looks like part of a tablecloth, maybe a table runner, because it's not big enough to be a tablecloth. It's hemmed on both ends, but they definitely cut off from a longer piece. Pretty colors. I mean, really, how could I pass that up, right? 30 bucks? <laughs> you know I'm going to have some fun with this. Although, I think that's not going to get cut up. And you can find these things online. And each one is different. Each one of these bundles is different. So they had different colorways. They had like reds and blues. And I can't even remember what else. Because when I saw the, they had a couple of more in this sort of general colorway with purple in it. But when I saw this fabric, it was all over. I was like, Tony, I, I have to get it. That was meant for me. It's hearts. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very, very excited that I got to spend some money. However, it was way more than I had planned on spending. Um, it came to $156, U.S. dollars. Just this, not including these. Because these I got at a different shop. It, to me, that's a lot, but these threads, they last you forever. There's 42 yards on each one, and there's 12 balls in each one. So that's 24 right there of variegated size 8 thread that I can play with for years to come. Not to mention the two that I already have. These are from my last trip up there. <laughs> so once a year, I get to go blow a bunch of money be naughty, but hey, you know, it's something I love to do, so there it is. So you all have a great day, a great rest of your week. It's Wednesday here, and I will be back hopefully tomorrow to do another video for my next heart. We shall see. No promises, because... If I can't keep them, then I feel bad. But, um, yeah. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And keep leaving comments. I love having discussions with all of you. And Colleen, thank you for telling me how you pronounce your name. <laughs> so I don't have to butcher it again. And Debbie and Robin, hi. And everybody else who's watching, I really appreciate it. Join in the fun. Pick up some fabric. Do some stitching. Have fun. Okay? Love you all. See you next time. Bye.